the son of a great king and a princess. He believed he was born of the gods. He conquered to the limits of the ancient known world. He was a man of great passion and excess who changed the course of history. Alexander the Great was born in Macedonia in 356 BC. He was the son of King Philip II, a general of outstanding ability and boundless energy, who had turned Macedonia into the leading power in Greece. Alexander's father was a clever politician and diplomat who succeeded in conquering the rebellious Greeks and passed his vision of a great Macedonian empire to his firstborn son. It all started in the summer of 356, when Alexander's father, Philip, was laying siege to a Greek city called Potidaea, and three messages came. On the same day, we're told, one, that a general of his had won a victory, two, that his horse had won at the Olympic Games, and three, that he was blessed with a son, whom he called Alexander. From an early age, Alexander showed extreme physical courage and loyalty. While still in his teens, he tamed his legendary battle horse, Bucephalus, when everyone else had failed. This was a very wild stallion that Philip was proposing to buy, but nobody could tame the beast, and so Philip finally told people to take it away because he wasn't interested. But Alexander had noticed that the horse was very frightened of its shadow, and he very cleverly led the horse into the bright sunlight where he could not see his shadow and therefore had calmed down, and Alexander was able to approach him and finally to mount him and tame him, and so he got the horse, whom he kept for the rest of his life until the horse died at about a very advanced age of 33. Brought up to be a warrior like his father, Alexander was trained to endure hardship, but he also received a privileged education under the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle. It was at this time that he forged the friendships that were to hold fast throughout his life. Most important of these was his relationship with Hephaestion, his future lover and second in command of his army. As students of Aristotle, the two young nobles learned of the wonders of the world. They were inspired to set out and discover the unknown and achieve greatness. The other great influence in Alexander's life was his strong-willed mother, Olympias. We have no description of her appearance, but um, what we are left with from ancient accounts is the impression of a hugely passionate individual fixated upon power for herself and for herself through her son. Olympias was high priestess of a cult devoted to the god Dionysius, the rituals of which involved snake handling. Rumor has it that Alexander's father once caught her in bed with a snake but she claimed it was the god Zeus in the form of a serpent. She seems to have insinuated that um, Philip was not Alexander's true father and that he was in some way engendered by a god and so felt that he was, in the Greek sense, a hero, the son of a god. Relations between Alexander's parents were always stormy, but the final straw came when Philip took a younger wife, Cleopatra. For Alexander, his parents' separation was a disaster. He could no longer rely on being his father's natural successor. Cleopatra had powerful relatives, one of whom uh, uh, almost implied that Alexander was illegitimate. He was a bastard said, now there will be legitimate heirs for you, Philip. And uh, that led Alexander to physically attack him, throw a goblet um, of wine at his face. 
Alexander and Olympias stormed out of court and exiled themselves in Epirus, his mother's family stronghold. But after a period of cooling off, the young warrior returned to court to secure his birthright. Alexander's position was still very precarious. Shortly after his return, his father was assassinated, leaving a baby son and potential heir. Alexander was immediately suspected of causing his father's death. And with Philip dead, a rebellion blew up in Greece. Alexander had to act immediately and decisively. He seized the throne and murdered all those who posed a threat to his succession, including his baby stepbrother. He then moved swiftly to put down the rebellion and assert himself. Alexander was able to appear on the scene against the major rebel city, Thebes, and after a relatively short engagement, captured the city, destroyed it, enslaved the population. It was an act of deliberate terror, which was meant to intimidate the rest of the Greek world. With Greece under his control, Alexander was now poised to realize his father's dream and expand his empire. He set his sights on the ancient enemy of Persia. Ruled by a warrior king, Darius III, the Persian Empire was at this time the largest and richest in the world, stretching from Egypt to the coast of Turkey, across Asia to India. Greece and Persia had been at war for nearly 200 years. Persia had invaded Greece and sacked Athens, but by Alexander's time had been pushed back to the Dardanelles. But Persia still occupied a series of Greek coastal cities in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey. In 335 BC, at the age of just 21, Alexander crossed the Hellespont, the symbolic border between Europe and Asia, and began his invasion. Alexander's army numbered just 40,000 infantry and 6,000 cavalry. From his father, he had inherited a strategy that was the key to his success in battle, the Macedonian phalanx. Row upon row of infantry wielding the famous 18-foot spear called the Sarissa. The advance of this murderous steel-tipped porcupine on the enemy was an invincible force and gave Alexander the means of taking on the world. I don't think he ever doubted his confidence as a commander. Um, one has to remember, too, that he was a commander who led his troops from the front, not from behind. And so where the first impact was, the decisive moment of the battle, there was Alexander.